Starting a new project today. These are going to uh, two sheets of plywood here. They're going to become storage benches for the playroom. Lay everything out here before I make any cuts. Several years ago I purchased this router bit to match the plywood. It's made for three-quarter inch plywood, which is not three-quarter inch plywood anymore. I have a lot of repetitive lines to make, so I made a little storyboard here. This is 19 inches wide. So I've got my long clamp here. I'll draw that line and then draw this line. Then to keep this accurate, if I put my spacer there and then my another my 19 inch against here, I can mark both in and move my straight edge. One of these benches is going to have three cubbies and the other one's going to have two. I've got my setup board here. This is exactly the width of the kerf on my circular saw, my old Bosch. This is not the first uh, bench of this type I've made. I made a mudroom bench for Nikki and her family three or four years ago and uh, in fact I looked at that video last night to remind me how I did it but I also came across a video by Nate Large he's got a good YouTube channel you ought to check it out and I've got several of these setup boards I keep here the board is for the thin kerf blade on my circular saw this uh, is a setup for three quarter inch plywood on my small router and then I saw Nate had one like this and I'm not sure it's any more accurate than this but um, I made one just the same. I'm going to give it a try here. Nate made a nice cubby bench. He had cut his components apart and broken them down before. I'm going to cut these dados and then break the plywood down. To avoid tear out, I've put down some painter's tape. Welcome back. It's day two of this build, Cubbies. Yesterday, our youngest granddaughter came out and we spent quite a bit of time with her, but after she left, I was able to cut out all the dados that I needed for the plywood. I got quite a bit of tear out. I've taken some precautions today. Uh, by the way, I keep all this stuff here because it's attached to my fan and I usually have this thing hanging, my ear muffs hanging right there, so it's a reminder because if I don't, they hit me in the head. Teaching physical education for 31 years ruined my ear hearing, and wearing hearing aids is no fun, so please protect your hearing. And of course your eyes. That's all right up here where I have to see it. So as my favorite man Norm would say, it's time for some assembly. Another thing I learned from Norm Abrams is that it is a lot easier to locate the screw holes from the inside than the outside. The back and the bottom are going to get screws. The top is not going to get screws, just glue. I've got my pieces of foam padding underneath there so I can avoid some blowout and I've marked where I want to put these holes so I don't mess that up. Now, once I've located the holes, I can go back and countersink them. I just finished a dry fit. Everything seems to be working, so it's time for some glue up. I'm going to be using Type Bond 3 because it allows you to work longer. It doesn't set up quite as fast as Type Bond 2 or the original Type Bond. And uh, this uh, glue up here is going to take a few minutes. So 
Let's get started. Well, as you can see, the shop is a mess. I, I don't know how it got this messy in, in a couple hours, but I kind of do that when I cook, too. I just get all kinds of stuff out, and it just stays out. Anyway, I'm getting ready to put this banding on. I found enough scraps around the shop here to make it. It uh, ended up to be 5 eighths of an inch thick. I'm going to tack it on with glue and brad nails to hold it. This is a painted piece, and then I'll trim it up afterwards. Time to get started. I've got a flush trim bit in here, pattern bit. This one has the ball bearing on the bottom. I've also added a big base here made out of a scrap piece of the same lumber. That's going to help me as I keep flat here as I go around here. There's really no reason for me to wait for the glue to dry up. I can flush trim this right now and uh, set it aside and start on the other one. I found some oak scraps that I really like the thickness of and we're going to be putting felt pads on here so this is really going to stick there well so I just put these scraps up here so Karen wanted a um, back or little arms on this so it would hold the cushion in place so I've made a rabbit along the back of this uh, five quarter poplar I had left over from Brandon and Alyssa's bed. And I'm gonna run that direction right down there. I'll put a little curve up here. You're gonna have to pretend that you saw me cut all these off. Because I failed to turn the camera on. It was kind of boring anyway. Yesterday I got busy after I sanded the corners off here. I forgot to bring my camera over and take photos of putting this on. It's really no big deal. I just glued it and tacked it to the side here. And I almost forgot to turn my camera on as I put on this little flashing here. Uh, this is just window dressing. Not really any big deal. Actually, some lumber I had left over again from Alyssa's bed. Listen, Brandon's bed. So I'm just going to put that on here and uh, call that end finished. So the only thing left to do is to put on this base trim. I'm using window stop and 5 8 inch brads. I've got it clamped down at the other corner so I could sneak up on this one and I've done that so now it's ready for some glue and screws or well, not screws but glue and brads Now I can sneak up on this one. 